Today I am exploring Fort Loudoun State Park in eastern Tennessee, an awesome reconstruction of a 1750s British fort. And right now I'm going to about to enter the surgeon's office and see what I can learn about the medicine practices of that time. several places or even sticking through the skin. Well, that's a wound we can't fix. And if we don't do anything, our patient is almost sure to die. So we have to remove that limb to turn it into a wound we can manage. I start off on my tourniquet above the area of the injury to stop the blood flow. To cut through the flesh, I'd use this capital knife and I would ring around the limb in a rather quick motion. This just goes through the flesh. It, gets us to the bone, but it's not intended to go through. The next thing I do is choose the right separator. But if it's the upper arm or the upper leg with, with one bone, I'd use the separator with one hole. The lower with two, I'd use the one with two holes. And by sliding this into the cut, your bone would actually stick through like my thumb does. And when I separated, I, I pulled back on that flesh, separating that exposing the bone, but perhaps more importantly, I'm saving that. We've learned that if we remove a limb and leave the tip of the bone showing, that bone's going to turn black. It's almost sure to flake off in small pieces. Our patient's going to die. But this is a way of saving a natural cover that's going to come back and cover up the tip of the bone. Now once I've done that, I'll saw through the bones. For smaller bones, this metacarpal saw will work, but for larger bones, this capital saw is what I need. And ma'am, I like to talk my patients through this first, kind of put their minds at ease, but in a few moments when we get to this stage, that leg will no longer be attached, but the amputation is not over yet. Watch the door for Marie, so she looks like she's about to bolt to us. <laughs> but, uh, what we have to do after that limb is removed is we've got to find a more permanent way to, to seal that off, to stop the bleeding. And those arteries, they draw back into the stump of that when they cut. So I may have to loosen the tourniquet slightly to find them, but once I do, I'm going to go into the stump, hook in those arteries, and just slightly pull them out. Because down here on this shaft, I'll have loops of this horse hair. They're already tied in knots, they're just not tightened down. And I'll slide them off the shaft and onto the artery to, to tighten down and stop the blood flow. Now I can do that on the veins as well. Uh, of course, another option for the veins is to use heat to cauterize those veins, but this won't work as well on those larger flowing arteries, so I need the horse hair for that. Um, once that's done, I'll, I'll continue to loosen the tourniquet a bit more to see if there are any places that need further attention. And most at this time would actually put a dress in the palm of mine. We'd want to, to wait a few days before sewing the stump back up. And when we did, we, we typically would be using horse hair to do that. Um, oftentimes I'm asked, what end of the beast did that hair come from? And you have two <laughs> options where the hair is long enough, the tail or the mane. Uh, and to some that seems a bit unclean. Uh, but uh, it's a plentiful material and it's strong enough to do what you need done. We use things that are, are pretty dirty today as well. Years after Fort Lyon, we learned that you better serve to pull that horse We don't know that at this time. Now, if you have blunt trauma to the skull, if, uh, let's say, uh, ma'am, instead of attacking the man's hand, you, you hit him over the head with a war club or the butt of that musket back there, um, that can cause swelling of the brain which can lead to brain damage, blindness, death, all sorts of things we'd like to avoid. You have a pressure building up there that we've got to relieve. And so the first thing I do is cut a small patch through the flesh on top of the skull. And then using these retractors, I'll pull that flesh back. Uh, I want to be careful because we then need to use that flesh in a later time. And then I press down and twist to remove a, a small section of the skull. Typically, I would, I would hold on to that piece of skull, I'd keep it moist in the vessel, and as that swelling and that pressure goes down, I'd eventually put that back in place and sew the skin back over. Now, if I damage it through the cracks, uh, drop it through the cracks on the floor, or if I can't use it for one reason or another, or ma'am, if you decide you really want to keep it as a war trophy, a reminder to never make you mad again, <laughs> if for any reason I can't use it, 
find something else to cover that up. I could even be a coin. So, sir, you stand the chance of actually walking out that door worth more than you were worth when you walked in. Who's been able to say that at the surgeon's office before? But these are a few of the things that we use. Well, thank you everyone so much for watching this video of another video of Fort Loudon. I hope you really enjoyed it. I know I did have really, really enjoyed visiting this place, learning all the history, seeing all the living history reenactors. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, please consider subscribing to my channel because each and every week I do post videos of me visiting historical places like Fort Loudon. I know you won't want to miss out on any of that. My YouTube videos are at youtube.com slash tnphotobug. I said thanks so much for watching. This is History Buff TN Photobug signing out. I'm indeed having a blast with the past.